Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I don't know if you can see me, but I hope you, you we can. I can't see if we have this today. We have technical issues, and I really hope that we'll be able to overcome the issues. Thank you for joining. Um, so far, we've been having some challenging times today. I mean, unfortunately, we love technology, and we believe that you know it's helping us to be connected. But sometimes we are, you know, going through some challenges. I hope you can see me. Please uh, send your notes. Um, I don't. I see myself frozen. Sara, mi vedi? I can't hear anybody. I I don't see myself. I can see you. Good afternoon, Paola Di Luca speaking. Uh, like I mentioned today, we are been having, facing actually challenging times, but we are pleased to have you on, you know, today. And, um, and so today we are uh, pleased to present our fourth episode of Visionaire. So Visionaries is a project by Trend Vision Forecasting, which is our international observatory, independent observatory, owned and sponsored by Fiera di Vicenza. Uh, these monthly webinars are really with the objective and willingness to keep the industry together and to really give enthusiasm and inspiration to designers, makers, manufacturers, retailers, and all jewelry lovers. Um, so today, we'll be actually, we are meeting with uh, originally four designers. For some reason, we had some challenges also with Sarah Hall, which was um, uh, in contact from Monte Carlo, but we are extremely pleased to have Anne Ong from the Philippines, from Manila. We have Federica Rettore from Milano and Manpria Bat from um, London. Now, uh, let me go to our wonderful, I don't know if our main office is able to give us uh, a full screen of all designers because I'd like to introduce you individually all of them. I don't know if it's possible because today we are having, you know, again, difficult challenges, but we'll try. I thank everybody for joining and, um, and I thank you, Erica and Patricia and, and everybody that is actually from Hong Kong and everybody is sending notes saying, yes, you are able to see us, which is great. And I'm very uh, thankful for that. So today, uh, like I mentioned, we'll be uh, investigating the concept of holisticism. Interconnected values are reflecting modern jewelry, showing new values, material, and design approaches. So um, this is an interesting topic uh, that we, we are facing as um, after a decade of resentless advancement in technology, manufacturing and the need for speed, we started this year with a halt. We basically, this past year, we were forced to stop our lives, our businesses, and reflect upon. And why the iner inertia of, stop, of shock came, came without much absorp uh, absorption, we are now reassessing our values, our values and retuning our freedom, revisiting ourselves. Now, I will ask kindly Sarah to give me our slides so we'll be able to see the slides and really to investigate the concept of e holisticism and really show the new concept of this macro plan 
And now we, we go from intangible value and consumer's value into product. So if you don't mind, Sarah, would you like to go to the next slide, please? The next one, thank you. Next. Next. Perfect. So we basically, as mentioned, we are, you know, we are really interconnecting our, our value to mysticism until recently, until like previous, uh, the pandemic time, the concept of, holistic, of being holistic was very associated to the concept of spirituality, intangible and tangible. This concept has been a spending, it's been uh, really finding a balance between our private life and really distributing our energy in a more holistic well-being and really understanding this optimizing what is called the idea of consumption to recreate what is right. So go, let's go to the next slide. Thank you. The next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you. The next one. Thank you. Thank you. The next one, please. Unfortunately, I don't have control today of my presentation because we have technical problems. But let's really look at this, you know, macro themes of what the way we have really um, identified what we call macro theme, macro theme being holisticism and let's call it direction, subdirection within this concept of holisticism. So really the concept, what does it mean holisticism today? Um, just now, uh, the Victoria Museum is opening um, this exhibition, which is historic modernism. And modernism on its own was not really a movement, but was meant to be a collection of ideas and concepts that were really mixing art and technology. Um, and so today, we are really living kind of a, a world of post-modernism or digital modernism in the sense of really mixing um, organic and scientific, um, uh, holistic being like abstract spiritualism and once again, science and technology. So how does it translate into jewelry? So here we are from healing crystal to slice stones to green power, recycled material. Let's explore what do we mean and how is this concept reflecting into jewelry today? So let's go to the first slide. So healing crystals and really using rough gemstones and minerals in a natural way, it is a trend that started already a couple of seasons ago. So up until a few years ago, stones were like perfectly cut. Uh, with no imperfection. Everything was to be certified and pure. Designers started using rock crystals and just rough stones or rocks in a very natural way. We're going to see later how some of these incredible VIP designers are being incorporated, um, these gemstones, or even just rough and recycled or upcycled material in their creations. So healing crystal and healing stones that we now rediscover, which even though it's part of um, tradition in every culture, in particular India, but not only, for many, many, for thousands of years, now all of a sudden, while we are facing and we are living digital disruption, we are going back in reappreciating the natural sources of life and well-being as natural crystal and the concept of healing energy. Slice diamonds, diamonds that were re up until recently used um, you know, uh, um, in, in perfect cuts, uh, completely pure diamonds, uh, natural only, now uh, are used not only by Indian in sliced, sliced diamonds. Now, it's very important to say, I'm very pleased to have today Manpriya Bhatt, which is uh, British Indian, um, but sliced diamonds have been part of the Indian tradition for centuries or even more for millennium because it's part of their heritage and they're being used in slide diamonds. It's interesting how international designers have picked up this, this, uh, this way of using diamond, but now they've been mixing it 
with synthetic material and like for instance we're going to with enamel or pvd or other stones so natural sliced diamonds are mixed up with synthetic or men made the material so this concept of natural and synthetic uh, uh, and or, organic and and and, and man-made this is really something that really uh, is embracing the concept of holistic and again green power so let's go to the next slide and now the green color is echoing really the concept of how nature is embracing our life but in a very new with a new perspective almost of imperfection but it's not really imperfection it's an imperfection that really reflects the perfection the uniqueness of life so holistic in a sense of really um you know wandering between material concept and man-made uh, uh, by upcycling and then we'll explain the concept of upcycling and recycling later and now some of these designers are really using material in their jewels uh next slide and now we are going into hand form eco gems material then they are like reusing plastic and upcycling and so they're really using synthetic materials and they are incorporating into uh uh natural inspired um you know pieces and they're echoing nature but completely in a different way so upcycle gem recycled material associated with gold or semi-precious material but definitely the use of alternative material is definitely something that is popular and is growing so let's go to the next slide and let let's have the, our main uh, uh, stars today which are our um, designers so interconnected values reflecting in modern jewelry showing new values material and design approaches let's start with federica rettore which is the design force be 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 behind rettore company a high-end design and manufacturing firm in milan with the style that defies categorization Federica focuses not only traditional fashion, but mostly sensitive design. Many years of creative experience coupled with re re relentless aesthetic research and handicrafting, eclectic use of material from the most precious to the most unusual and unexpected pieces. Her creations are featured in the most pre prestigious transcending stores um, in particular in the united states new york Beverly hills chicago florida but also in the caribbean in 2011 one of federica's designer was awarded at the couture las vegas design award um, as a best design in innovative category so let's go to the next slide please next please uh, and now this is uh Federica image online. This is Federica uh, uh, communication. I think that when we talk about being holistic and really being um, a, 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 a great storyteller today and communicator is not, and we are going to talk shortly about, with Federica, the design itself is only one uh, let's say, um, a step of, of creating really a brand and designing, because the design itself is really associated to, to really communicating and telling a story and really putting together a, a, a narrative, something that tells the story of the designer, the philosophy and the mission. I'd like to introduce Federica Rettore, and I'd like to ask Federica, what is your vision about having really um, a, 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 an holistic approach to design uh, and her vision in, in, in her philosophy and the usage of material and her like basically storytelling? Please, uh, Federica, share your vision. We are very happy about showing. Please, let's go Thank to you. the slide. slide. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm very happy to participate to this webinar. Well, what I've always, um, um, my philosophy is that I take uh, um, some inspiration from nature, but I use peculiar materials, materials that come from nature or materials that are um, handmade or also used uh, 
um, I'm, I, I'm always used to do some uh, um, um, 3D um, designing to create my product, uh, but then it is mixed with uh, hand, uh, it, it is uh, hand made. And um, lately, in my latest collection, I use also the enamel like a painting, we used to mix it together, inspired from nature, but again, uh, um, created by hand, uh, and uh, uh, the use as well of uh, uh, new te technologies that are very important. So my philosophy is to uh, create uh, mixing and blending all of these uh, 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 materials uh, and uh, skills, uh, where at the end uh, there is always the need of uh, um, the hand, the hand of the workshop, of the craftsman, of the, of the craftsman, absolutely, this is fundamental, but uh, it's very interesting what I figure out lately, and mostly from the pandemic that has given me the chance uh, to uh, study uh, on these uh, programs of 3D modeling. It's very interesting to uh, be more creative, crea creative to ensemble all of these things. Uh, it is very important for a designer to not only design a concept, but to have a full uh, 360 degrees on uh, how to produce it and how to um, explain it and how to propose it uh, to the clients to have a full story, a story that is um, follows a link from uh, that follows your philosophy, what is in your inner soul. So, Federica, sorry to interrupt you. So, what kind of materials you usually use in your collection? Uh, I mean, besides gemstones, I mean, what kind of mixes and also techniques that you're using? Because I know you are mix and matching different type of techniques and everything. What kind of, you know, can you please share with us your, your vision and your like, you know, production style? Absolutely. Well, of course, stones uh, uh, like Bulderopos are very fascinating because uh, they are unique. Uh, they have these colors that are amazing. But also uh, horn, the zebu horn that I use uh, in my collection are very interesting. It's very interesting because it's a natural material. And when you use it and you polish it, uh, you create pieces that are always one different from the others because nature does not repeat itself. It's impossible. No. Yeah. So, uh, so you're using horn, you're using gemstones. Horn, gemstones, uh, and uh, also slice the horn uh, and use also um, pieces that are uh, remain from other uh, productions. So I re uh, so you, you do you upcycle pieces. So I upcycle pieces. You yes, upcycle. This is a trend among designers that they are actually. Um, dismounting old pieces and rebuilding new pieces with elements from uh, either old bracelet, uh, old pieces, old jewelry, or old collections. So they're like using old pieces as components to recreate uh, new pieces. That could be a material, uh, that could be pearls, could be diamonds, could be gemstones, or could be anything, it could be even a piece of gold or something. So just to explain what does it mean upcycle, not to be confused with recycling, for instance, recasting, melting gold, or stuff like that. It's, it's recycling, upcycling, is reusing pieces that they had a life on its own, and they are reused to give a new life. Uh, Federica, I wanted to clarify this for our audience. Thank you. are so interested in learning the difference between recycling and upcycling. Absolutely, you have explained it in the perfect way. <laughs> also, um, what I like uh, to create is to create stones using materials that are natural, but um, creating different slices of stones uh, that add one to the other with uh, um, rose gold in the middle that it, it is uh, cut by a laser machine. And oh, that's before, interesting. 
the, and the facetted quartz on top. So it's created by hand, uh, but yeah. using natural materials and uh, new techniques uh, and so modern. You are layering, let me let me explain. Let me uh, uh, clarify. You are laying. This is interesting because they do Indian do that with polki. So from my understanding, you are layering. Sla you know, a layer of pink gold behind the gemstone, like quartz. Exactly. Give it that it's very interesting because this technique he used, and then Mantri I can explain it. Polki technique in, in Indian tradition, they're adding a gold foil behind diamonds to give it different with sliced diamonds, not full diamonds, sliced mm -hmm. diamonds, to give it a particular foil. It's interesting that you are doing it is a similar technique but completely reinterpreted and exactly. it's very interesting how design and designers around the globe are reinterpreting or even evolving or doing things that might come from heritage meaning tradition but taking it completely to a different level i think this is very very interesting federica and thank you, thank you for sharing this Thank you very much. Exactly, it's the one in the picture that you're showing right now. Uh, the picture in the center shows exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. It's very so, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And then uh, the enamel. Well, uh, actually, I'm always interested from colors because I believe that colors give a good energy uh, to your soul, to, to your person, your personality. So uh, this is why uh, every day you choose the color you want to put on. It means that you need that color. What I wanted to do is to create with enamel these mixtures of uh, two colors, uh, like the plique jour, that is a technique that comes from uh, ages. Uh, uh, so, but I reinterpreted it in a different way, and the. Um, like you see in the pictures on the left side, it it shows uh, it, it it gives a, a new kind of uh, spectrum of colors. Very nice, thank you, Federica. I'd like to go now to Mampria Bat. I am very proud, uh, happy, and pleased to have today Mampria, uh, and to really have an international crowd, really to show how the 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 the, the create the creative wealth that the world is sharing with all of us and, and also to make, you know, to, to share with our audience how design is really traveling and, and is being evolving in parallel ways in different parts of, you know, the world. And Mampriya is, um, she's daily born, shared her mother love for precious stones and jewelry design. At just 24 years old, Mampriya opened her first shop in Delhi and she counted Princess Diana and Hillary Clinton among, amongst her clientele. So congratulations, Mampriya. Following Thank a move to, move to London, she decided to design jewelry catering to the exclusive high-end taste of the cosmopolitan London clientele with the new brand Mampriya B. Uh, a quarter of a century in the jewelry industry is a testament to the last, uh, lasting relationship Mampriya has back with her clients uh, as for, sorry, as forged with her client, forgive me, Mampriya, as forged with her client, as well as with the outstanding craftsmen, vendors, and suppliers who are so key to her success. In honing her signature confident design style, collection reflects her belief that luxury jewelry should be elegant, wearable, and playful. If you, and now I'd like to show uh, her your beautiful image uh, and jewelry. Uh, that's your Instagram account, and you know we are showing everyone's um, you know accounts and everybody's uh, website, making sure that you know uh, people can follow you and discover your incredible creation. Uh, you will be sharing about your technique. I love your pieces, also, Mantia. They are like one of a kind. One piece is different than the other one. You have been using. Um, um, Slice diamonds, but also the slides, slides, uh, gemstone, which I personally love the technique itself. But you're also, uh, you know, mounting these gemstones in a very unique, modern, and sophisticated way. Please tell us about your creation and your 
holistic vision, which is not only about material, but mixing past, present, and future. Uh, firstly, thank you, Paula, for inviting me to this prestigious forum and giving me the opportunity to be part of this holistic holisticism webinar. I'm greatly honored to be here along with such talented um, creators and jewelry designers and Federica, and we're missing Sarah, but um, so I'm really honored and privileged. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, uh, so a bit about uh, how I about how I got into this um, using slices. Um, going through my mother's a big jewelry collector, and I've got you know wedding jewelry which is quite um, weighty and not easy, quite tricky to wear in London. And when I was launching my business here, I wanted to make pieces which are wearable for the modern woman, fun, playful. And um, I started with using slices because that's, as you, you said earlier, it's part of our heritage. And, um, and you know, it's the connection between India and so that's how I started into. Um, my latest collection is with uh, Mother of Pearl and Slices. And um, Mother of Pearl, I think, complements the slices um, really well because Mother of Pearl is elegant, subtle, and it brings out the best of the slices. It enhances the luster. Um, it's, you know, it's like a marriage you know made I in love, heaven. Andrea, you know what I love a lot? I love the, the mother of pearl, but I also love the color that you are associating in contrast to your diamonds. Yeah. I mean, this, create, this contrast of material and, and, and that you are creating, it's really stunning. It's really amazing. Really Thank fabulous. you. Yes. Thank you. So again, do you know with the, the in, for instance, I've used color uh, with the uh, slices. It's, it's like I'm paying homage to the Art Deco because I was really influenced by, I'm really influenced by the Art Deco movement where you see bold, strong colors. And the same way I've used um, slices, with, for instance, with rose quartz, yeah. calcedony. So it just complements and it's a homage basically. You, you, you know what I, 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 I like to, intera to, uh, to uh, interrupt you, Manpriya, because just echoing Deco, which has been actually popular in fine jewelry for the last decade, I would say, and actually we just entered 2021, which is parallel to the 1920s and the Royal yeah. years. Roaring years, and that time there was deco time, and deco right. time was also the beginning. So there is a strong parallelism between modernism then and post and 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 digital modernism today, where we are facing digital disruption, digital transformation. Yeah. But also, I would like to say that deco style became the first global movement in design because even though it was an evolution of Art Nouveau and Liberty, Art Nouveau being France in France and Liberty being in England, but then the Maharaja, uh, the Maharaja were like delegating and commissioning Cartier and all the jewelers in right. Europe, the big pieces with they be, which they became the iconic pieces of the 20s and the, the Cartiers. So it's interesting how, you know, Indian designers, but not only, they are uh, celebrating deco and you're using uh, your slice diamond from your family heritage with your leg and taking it to the next level by celebrating. So I, I like to connect all these phenomenon, showing and, and really sharing to the audience how 
phenomenon probable, not only mm. physically, but in time and space. I think this is something very interesting to share. And, um, and so I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to really talk about this important phenomenon that it, it was happening then and now it's happening at the same time. And now Indian design is entwined in Deco time because of the Maharaja and Cartier and all the jewelers. And now you guys are unconsciously inspiring also other designers. Yeah. So, I mean, also, you know, if you look at it that way, that, um, you know, when um, Teco started, I mean, it was a period we were coming, they were coming out of, um, it, it, it was, they were celebrating. And I think something similar is going to happen now after COVID. Um, we've all realized that life is not perfect. Um, you know, there is, um, you know, how, um, how vulnerable we are. And I think we're not looking, I think we, we've realized that we have to embrace imperfection. So I, when I use slices, I'm trying to convey that. But look at the beauty. Everybody, no one's perfect, you know, so, um, yeah. Absolutely. Your pieces are completely stunning. So let Thank me go you. now to Anne, and now we are going in a different part of the world, which is the Philippines. And let me go to Anne. Anne Wong is an international acclaimed, multi awarded uh, high fashion designer, visionary, and creator. Uh, the pieces she has, she has made have been fine in two things sustainability and artistry. I love always being driven to find the beauty in material and pieces that people often overlook and underappreciate. I savaged material and I find the way to repurpose stuff I find, as I want to show people that the common can also be transformed into something extraordinary. She, get, she garnered the award of best design for sustainability in fashion at the February Winter Show in New York in 2016. She also was won three consecutive Kata Awards for creativity and, and ingenuity in fashion is the highest and most prestigious award given to a Filipino designer. Um, now, I like to say that um, Anna is a very uh, well-recognized, internationally well-recognized designer. Her pieces are featured in every magazine, fashion, and so on. She does, let's call it semi-precious or completely e eclectic pieces because she uses pieces that they like material. They are completely, you know, found on the, on, on the, on the street, meaning that she founds, she uses wood, uh, twigs uh, that they're being, you know, really things, she gives light to, to things that they're really, like she said, overlooked and not considered. Um, among her clients, the most, uh, let's say, iconic Iris, Iris Apfel is one of their biggest fans, and most of the jewelry Iris Apfel is wearing is on, uh, on. She's really talented, and she only, not only creates jewelry, but also objects, evening bags and she's a very eclectic and versatile designer um i every piece that she does is one of a kind and um not only she uses uh you know natural material that she just puts together and casts together with her creativity but she really um uh, she's very interesting oh. because she you she she you i don't like the word using but she actually shares their work and, and manufacturing with local uh, communities in the Philippines, helping the local community in difficulties, trying to support their family. And I think she does something amazing. And this is the reason why I find um, uh, Anne amazing. Not only because she does incredible pieces, not only because she's amazing and at times theatrical in her look uh, but also she is very humble she always presents herself very humble like all of the designers today so talented people are amazingly uh, uh, humble 
but she's very, very innovative and creative. Thank you, Anne, for, having, for being here today. Thank you, Paula. And you know, uh, such an honor and a privilege to be featured as one of your guests and to, you know, Frederica and Mapria and Sarah, you know, thank you because I um, am very, very uh, honored to be here. And, um, and thank you for always, you know, gathering us all together to move forward in times of, uh, you know, difficulties. Yeah. Well, today, actually, uh, we are, you know, in, in today, it's, it's also challenging this session because I am actually doing the session from my phone because, mm -hmm. you know, I, my, my computer for some reason was not giving a good image, as you know. And so I, we are doing this in a very difficult time, but the show must go on always. And we have to pretend yes. that everything happens in an effortless way. So I feel very, very proud to have you all here. And most important, to keep the community together, but showing what incredible talent there is around the world. So please tell us about your pieces. Let's talk about, for example, the pieces that you're showing here. Tell us how you are picking up just rocks and twigs and, and pieces of wood and mounted together. How your creation come and how you share and distribute your, your um, production your you know how where are your craftsmen in the Filipinos it's very interesting your stories and how you create this incredible one of a kind and then you do shows in New York and you're very very uh, incredible is this is Sarah uh, uh, is Sarah on board with us it's Sarah here Sarah Ho I don't know it seems so anyway yes. Anne, please yes yeah. Okay. Um, my uh, my vision is to uh, promote uh, Filipino artistry, and um, I'm always fascinated with with wood, with salvaged wood, because my country is always devastated with storms, and um, you know, and um, um, a lot of my uh, artisans here are are needs a job, so I always try to create something different and something um, unique and um, I am using a lot of materials from bamboo and um, as I say salvage wood and I uh, I also use like uh, because we are rich in natural resources so I use a lot of um, mother of pearls and um, some um, some semi-precious stones also but you know my design is very organic because i'm always inspired by by nature and i always like to go to the mountain and gather some woods and um sometimes i talk to a lot of people that uh that lives in the mountain so i try to get a lot of pieces like the salvage wood twigs and you know i um I try to repurpose and make it into something op uh, opulent and functional pieces. Well, I, you know what I like? I like the mix of all the designers here because they're all using material completely in a different way, mix and matching either natural organic material or uh, again, synthetic material in association with organic mixing ancient techniques, new techniques, and being both, uh, both recycling or upcycling material. Uh, but now, if I don't go wrong, because I don't see very well, because I see very small, is it Sarah on, online? Is it Sarah Ho? Sarah, are you here? Can you hear me? I don't think she can hear me. I don't think she can hear me. Well, let's go to her, uh, Sarah. Let me go now to Sarah. I think she's here, but I don't think she can hear us for some mysterious reasons. Uh, so, Sarah. I'm sorry, Sarah, I can't hear a thing, Paula. For, can um, you hear us? Can you hear us? We can hear you, Sarah. Can you talk to us, please? I don't know why you can know us. We can. We, I I could hear you. 
So having grown up in Macau, Sarah Hall moved to London to study fashion, jewelry, and design. Sarah went uh, uh, on to study gemology in Antwerp, preparing her to launch her fine jewelry company in 2006. Sarah now showcases a bold and feminine design as a Mayfair showroom, an international exhibitor and trunk show. Her work is celebration of rare pearls, gemstones, and diamonds. Sarah Hall London is committed to responsible practices by minim minimizing waste through recycling, transparent supply chain, and, advoc and advocacy for sustainability. Sarah Hampton, each design concept, dreaming up a luring color combination in striking silhouettes. Romantic and contemporary arrangement of pearls, diamonds, and gems are crafted in vibrant motifs with a signature enamel lace pattern, PVP coated setting, and precious beads, culminating in, into a unique and remarkable jewel. So, Sara, this is Sara Image. Uh, I don't know if Farah would be able to talk to us for some reason. She wasn't part of the rehearsal and we actually we have challenges today. So whatever you're seeing, it's a miracle because I don't know if you can see us, but we, we, we think you can. I don't know how, but we think you can. So this is Sarah Hall um, image online and, and, and her website and Instagram account you can uh, follow. She recently um, uh, presented this amazing, which we don't have the pictures here, but they, she has it online, this neon, two yeah. neon collection. Can you, can you hear Sara? Can you talk, Sara? Um, Sara, can you hear us? Try to come out. Come we cannot hear Sara. But anyway, she recently uh, um, launched her incredible new collection. I would um, actually uh, su um, suggest you to go online and check. It. So now, uh, if you can give me a full screen from our main office, can you give us a full screen and remove the presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I was out of Sarah. So, um, yes. Now, we had a very challenging session today, I have to say, mm -hmm. but I am happy that you were able to be patient and bear with us today. Um, I'd like to, uh, I'd like the design, I don't know if, Sara, can you hear us? No. Ara, Sara can know hear us. I think she doesn't know how to use the platform, I don't know, but anyway, we are happy to see her. Um, Federica, Mampia, yes. what would you like to yeah. add to this presentation today? We had some kind of technical issues, but as you can see, no matter what, we are strong, we are keep going, and we are doing it. So, um, how do you see, uh, you know, the, you know, the, what's, to, to your perspective, as, as a designer and as a business uh, entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, how do you, what do you see going forward in terms of design direction and, and, and everything that you see? I mean, it's like, how do you see the holistic, the holistic uh, movement proceeding? And what about you from your business perspective? This is a, is a very, very good question, I have to say. Well, in my opinion, what I see is that uh, technology is fundamental. Creativity is important when you can mix uh, what is uh, design creativity with technology, absolutely. And uh, I suppose that uh, there will be uh, many new ideas popping up because when you have to face something new, a new technology, this inspires uh, to create uh, much in, in a much better and um, pleasant way, also a wild way. Uh, but what I see that is very important that um, technology gives us also uh, the chance uh, to use a much more uh, artistic and personal way of communicating. This is 
um, widely seen in fashion. You see the big uh, luxury and fashion houses that are using, um, are mixing their way of creating with uh, uh, influences uh, from great designers, from street designers to illustrators to uh, poets. And so I think that this is a very good challenge to take out from ourselves uh, uh, new and very inspiring uh, collections, designs, and uh, um, I suppose that when all of this pandemic uh, end, will end uh, and uh, we will uh, go back to the roaring 20s uh, yes. <laughs> in 2020. We are getting ready. I mean, we are we are warming up for exactly, time. exactly. And I, think, and I think design design is blossoming also because uh, co consumers, but I would say collectors. I don't like the word consumer. I would say collectors, jewelry yes. lovers, you know, collectors, people they love art as well, mm -hmm. jewelry, and they want to express their emotions and personality. They are really collecting and purchasing jewelry. Uh, one, because there is an intrinsic value that stays no, no matter what. Exactly. And, and also because they are able to express their own uh, emotion and feelings. Yeah. And, um, and Manpriya, uh, what is to your perspective? What's happening? I mean, how do you see, uh, what do you see coming forward for the following seasons? And what about, you know, your, product, your design? So, um... So what I feel, I mean, you know, coming out of COVID, people are looking to make something which makes them happy, joyful, playful. You know, we've been locked in those for so long that we want to look at, I feel color, we're going to embrace a lot of color um, and color in terms of, for instance, like I, what I'm think I'm, in, doing in in for my future collections is I'm looking at new materials. Um, still work with semi precious and precious stones, but also different stones which I beyond the emerald rubies, sapphires, and the pearls. Um, I'm expanding my enamel collection. Um, exploring, like I said, new gemstones, materials. Um, but peop I think um, color and colored stones is what people are going to embrace more. Yeah. Um, and people want in um, different, you know, they want, they want something unique. They don't want, you know, things which are uh, mass produced. That's my feeling. Yeah. Um, they're willing to pay for creativity, something different. Hmm. Yes. You know what? I'd like to say something that is very important to inspire the audience and, um, and, and, and which can be also buyers. Um, and can you, can you see me? Okay. Uh, buyers and, and, and other designers. I think the point is, it's important, like you said, people is tired of mass production. And I believe that uh, creating collaboration, uh, you know, with designers and, um, and also uh, the capsule collection. So uh, yep. large companies mm -hmm. or like, you know, the Di National Diamond Association right now, you know, has started this project with independent designers. So I mm -hmm. see that companies or, or you know brands that they have like they've been producing pieces and like you say large production i think that what's happening going forward creating collaboration and capsule collection yes. with independent designer will be very very important mm -hmm. not yeah. only important for the manufacturer for these companies but also for the independent designer because the independent designer can learn a lot um, yeah. And at the same time, from the from the large organization, the large corporation, and so on, like Tiffany yeah. and the Cartes and the Bulgari, but also other other organization. Just I just yeah. mentioned a few. 
At the same time, uh, also in terms of community, I think that com the community, uh, it's really um, interested in independent design because they feel they have a more of a human touch and they yeah. really deal directly with the designer, with, let's say, the tailor, the maker, uh, the, yeah. the, the dreamer that create the piece, the piece itself and is able to, um, uh, um, to empathize with the client. So that's very yeah. important. Uh, Sarah, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Sarah cannot hear me, so it is a pity that we were able mm. to, uh, we do have uh, Sarah Ho with us, but unfortunately for some technical reasons, uh, we were unable to hear a voice and she was in hearing for us, but that's part of today challenge. But as you can see, we didn't give up no matter what and we were able to uh, proceed. I think maybe we will have a different session and maybe we'll have uh, Sara on board. Sara right now is in Monte Carlo. Uh, so everybody's in a different part of the world, which makes everything special and incredible mm -hmm. and amazing. And what I love out of these, uh, let's say, technology, technological disaster today, but at the same time, what I love is the fact that we are all together. So let's focus on what we have rather than what we don't have. Maybe exactly. Despite, of, despite yeah. of the circumstances, we are in different parts of the world talking about design with an audience. And we are really identifying not only design movement, but most, most important, what people want and will want from now onward. And actually, which is... Uh, just to recap the session today, really holistic translating into um, really wandering between time and space and material, between organic and natural and man-made and synthetic, and sometimes, why not, lab-grown, by mixing techniques, mm -hmm. by mixing heritage, uh, reinterpreted with a futuristic approach. Um, Unfortunately, Sarah cannot talk right now because for some reason she doesn't hear us. She just launched this incredible fluo collection in association with Pearl. So it's very modern and futuristic, but with a romantic feel. So the rest of the designers that they are mixing, you know, their heritage, sliced diamonds in association with mother of pearls or enamel, and Federica, which is using horn and gemstones in, in enamel herself, and mm -hmm. Anne, which is using uh, recycled material and pieces that she finds from uh, some kind of, you know, uh, uh, weather and climate disaster in the Philippines, and she turns it into amazing masterpieces that they are uh, purchased and celebrated all over the world. So, I think this is an interesting time. I think for buyers, retailers, and designers, you should follow this designer and the design that we featured today as an example, as an inspiration for you to follow your vision, but also to embrace modern time and the challenging time that we are facing. But at the same time, they are as challenging as are inspirational and full of potential. So I thank you for today. I thank you very much for being present, but most thank important you. for accepting the, 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 the challenges that we had and which has been almost comical, but fun and we're happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll be talking to, to you soon. Thank you. And I thank will you. be inviting you, Sarah, at the next session because this is wasn't, you know, she was she was here, but she wasn't here. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, everyone.